It's the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It is. Yes. Some of the family members think. God bless you, man. All right, as this ever member, if you'll pray for our Bible study tonight, please. Gracious Lord, we do thank you, we love you, and we appreciate all that you've done. We pray tonight that, Lord, you will be honored, high, and lifted up. God, help pastor as he teaches us more of your word. God, give us a heart to receive and ears to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Tonight we're dealing with how are we living. And we're in the book of Romans chapter 7. Last week we dealt at length with moral accountability and how we have a responsibility unto God. We have a responsibility to God. We have to respond to God's call. But we also have to respond and answer to God about how we are living. We mentioned last week the need for Jesus. The law of God requires what a person without Jesus could never fulfill. It simply shows us that we need help. How many of you need a help? Amen? Amen. Spiritual help. Thank God we have a Savior that can help us. And he's touched really with the feeling of our infirmities. He understands and knows what, it like, what it's like to go through things and be tempted. I'm thankful we have a God that sympathizes with us and can comfort us. Finally, we discuss how Jesus must increase, but I or we, we must decrease. If we want to live a life that God or live the life that God desires us to have, we've got to surrender to him and allow him to order our steps by the Spirit of God. The proverb, in Proverbs 3, 5, he said, Trust in the Lord, thy God, with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he will direct us. You know, we can get guidance from our Heavenly Father tonight. In verse 17, we want to pick up right here. Paul the Apostle speaking here. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. And we want to talk about, are we operating in the flesh or the spirit? Paul here in these verses, he's not justifying sin. That would be nonsense. He just proved that previously. He said to will to do right is present with me. I, I want to do right, but that flesh don't want to act right. We know how that body is. The body does not want to act right. The Christian is saved upon salvation, confessing from the heart and acknowledging Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior from the heart. But the body, the flesh, the outward shell is not saved. And we want to talk about that. We still face temptations as Christians. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. There's still an inclination to sin. Amen. <laughs> All right, check it. That inclination to sin is still there. But the difference is now as Christians, the difference is we have power through Christ yep. and the Holy Ghost to live above it. We can now tell our bodies what to do because of what Christ has done, done in us and for us. And we want to talk about that. We can put that put sin down in our lives because of the work that Jesus accomplished on the cross. And we left off with this verse in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, 12b, the latter part of verse 12. Paul the Apostle speaking here. He says, work out somebody else's salvation. No, he doesn't say that, does he? He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, with reverence. Realizing that day is approaching. But then he said in verse 13, he says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. God is working salvation in all good and perfect gifts in our lives as we permit him to. God can't just barge in. He's a perfect gentleman. 
He's at the door. He stands and knocks. He wants to fellowship with his people, but we have to allow him to do so. Amen. Exactly. You're exactly right, sister. We have to bring him in, which means we have we have to get out of the way. Right. If we want uh, if we want if we want him to come in, we have to move some stuff out. Our ego, our pride, our our independence, and we have to be fully dependent on him. And so he's saying, work out your own salvation. How do we work out our own, our own salvation? We allow God to have his way in our lives. We don't operate in the flesh anymore by what we feel and what we think. Let's keep going. It is God that saved us. Paul said it this way in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. He says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. By grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's grace. God saved us by his grace. God didn't owe us. The law said condemn. Yeah. But God said, I got grace. Mm -hmm. God was rich in mercy. The law does not really give you a way out. No. And if it been for the law, I would, I would have been long gone. Yeah. Amen. I, I didn't get what I deserved. I got what I did not deserve. I got his grace. It's a merited favor upon our lives. Once we realize that God and nobody else really owes us anything, the better we'll be. Amen. We live in a world that's now entitled and now feel, I mean, the majority, not everybody, but we all can honestly say we've all felt like we deserve something. Yes, sir. But really, nobody owes us anything, amen? Mm -hmm. But thanks be unto God that God gave us grace. He gave us mercy. He didn't give us what we deserve. He gave us a gift, amen? He said, not of works, least any man should boast. If we did anything good, if we've been kind, if somebody saw something good within us, it wasn't us, it was God in us. It was God. It was God. All good and perfect gifts come from who? The Father of lights. Yes. And in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It was God that worked in our lives. So we have no reason to boast. Saving the cross. Saving Christ crucified. Accepting Christ crucified. Now, so let's come to contextualize the, this area of the Bible we just read in Romans chapter 7, verses 17 through 18. Once again, Paul the Apostle, he's dealing with the particular subject here. He's dealing with sanctification. He's dealing with sanctification, which means what? Being set aside for God's use. Before salvation, we were set aside for whose use? Our use. We did whatever we wanted to do without regard to God. But now he's calling us first to salvation. We've answered the sin question. We realize that there's none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God outside of Jesus, right? And so we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because we realize for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we confess his lordship, which means his rulership. Amen. So he's the ruler of our lives and we're saying he's our Lord. And so, and so now we're taking a step up in Christianity. We're now set aside for God's use, which means we have to make time for God now. We have to devote time. We have to consecrate ourselves to God in order to be set aside for his use. Here is a Christian. Let's, kind of, let's set the context up. Paul, here in his Bible reading, Romans chapter 7. Here's a Christian that has gotten saved. But he's operating under the flesh. And if you're going to run into trouble anytime, as, anytime we as Christians try to operate in the flesh. Tell them what we feel. What we feel. We've been mistreated, so what we want to do? We want to take revenge. No, God is our avenger. We want to, though. And sometimes we do and we fail. We shouldn't. But we want to. We want to trust God. We have to trust God. We can't operate in the flesh. Let's look at it. He's trying to live for God. Without depending on God and the Holy Ghost. This man in our Bible reading, he's trying to live for God without depending on God and the Holy Ghost. He said, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Wait a minute, I know the law. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I find myself not doing it. Why? Because I stop operating in the spirit and start operating in the flesh. And what I feel. And what I feel. Paul said it this way in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Walk in the Spirit, capitalize that. The Spirit of God is what he's referring to. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, lust of desire. 
If you walk in the Spirit, you won't do what your body tells you to do. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't do what your body tells you to do. He agrees with the law that is good, but at the same time, I'm doing that which is contrary to what God would have me to do. That's Romans 7, verse 16, and I'm just paraphrasing that. That's what he's referring to, really. Mm -hmm. The Christian, he walks away from God, and he reacts. He behaves on what he feels differently, yes. To live in the flesh is to operate on our feelings and what we want. Don't misunderstand me. Wanting and having a desire may not necessarily be a bad thing. If you're hungry, you should eat. Your flesh, your body's telling you you need some food. But you shouldn't indulge. Indulge. In Romans chapter 7, verse 18. Let's look at the structure of man. And I meant to get a slide, and we'll get one next week. Have a slide for you all. So you can see the Romans chapter 7. Verse 18, he says, for I know that envy, what's it say? Verse 18, in that is, in my flesh, flesh dwelleth no good thing. We got to know that as Christians. In our flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Operating in the flesh, living without regard to God, dwelleth no good thing. We get a couple things right. Uh, we get the tendency. There's a tendency. I'm not saying we always ask or we, I'm not saying that we don't defeat it, but there's a tendency to get lifted up above our measure. That's why John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. I'm not even worthy to unlatch Jesus' shoes. He's the Lamb of God which came to take the sin away from the world. Jesus is prefer preferred before me because he was before me. Now wait a minute, when you begin to look at that, on earth, in earthly terms, Jesus was born after John the Baptist, but he's saying Jesus was God before he became man. Yeah, man. And so because of that, I should be submitting to him, being directed by him because he's God. It's because of God I have what I have. I will bless the Lord at all times. God deserves the praise in our lives because of what he's done in our lives. When you begin to realize that it was the grace of God that woke us up this morning. It was the grace of God that even put food on our table. These are things that sometimes we go through life and we can go through this, this, uh, this repetition and so forth and not consider, but really it was God. Mm -hmm. It was God that paid our bills. It was God. But anyway, Paul said, in my flesh dwell of no good thing. For to will is present with me. To do the right thing is with me. I got that desire to want to do right. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I find myself falling short because I really don't know. I know I have a knowledge. I have a knowledge. Knowledge is what to do and why. But I don't have the skill. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. And we can't know how to live for God without God. This is why it's so imperative to get filled with the Spirit of God, but also live a life that's consecrated to God every day. Because in order to, uh, to, to develop a habit, we have to have three components, three elements. That skill, yeah. knowing how to do it, that's knowledge, knowing, uh, 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 knowing the why, but also, but also, there has to be motivation, a desire, desire. to do it. Yeah. And so when those three things meet, you find that habit. And so God can help us live for him, provided we surrender to him in every area. There's things that we face in life, temptations, what have you, things from the past that have not necessarily been cast on God, so we find ourselves dealing with that thing again. Doing it. Dealing with it again, or even doing it. Doing it. Or even doing it. Exactly. So Paul is saying, I know I need to be doing the right thing. I have a knowledge of the word of God, but I don't know how to fulfill it because I'm operating really in the flesh. And so he says in verse 20, Romans chapter 7, verse 20, he says, Actually, 19, did we read 19? No. For the good that I would, I do not. For the evil which I would not, that I do. I'm not doing what's good. I'm doing what's evil. 
because the flesh is dominating my life. When you begin to look at the body and the structure of a person, even in psychology, they teach you, they teach you this. The body, the soul, and spirit. The body is world consciousness, senses. See, touch, taste, smell, hear. Mm -hmm. It's your flesh. Yes. These things, these senses can be used to sin. Oh, she looked good. Well, you're married. <laughs> you better think about that. <laughs> or you're not married, and you still better think about that. You know, them eyes can get you in trouble. Yes, trouble. That's, how, that's what happened to Eve. She got in trouble. She was looking at something that she wasn't supposed to be looking at. Amen. Wasn't supposed to be around. Because when you look at something too long, you start, guess what? Desire. Yeah. Craving it. How many times y'all got, got, got caught up in the mall? You saw that pretty dress or, or saw something, amen? Uh, there, there's been times, amen, we, we say, I'm, I'm just going car shopping. Right. And the car salesman came out with some old goofy looking uh, bow tie or something, and he sold you a car or whatever. But there was no tendency, and, and there was no, uh, 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 you didn't plan on that, but you set yourself up for the kill by looking at it, and the next thing you know, you're buying it or what have you. And so sometimes our eyes can get us in trouble. Sometimes what we smell can get us in trouble. How about what we hear? Oh, always. How many times have we heard gossip and we changed our view about a person? We changed our view about a person because poison contaminated how we thought about that individual. True. That's why God hates gossip. Mm. That's true. Yes, sir. We have to, Paul said, abstain the very appearance of evil. Yeah. Yeah. Abstain it. Let's keep going. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The flesh, the outer shell, may yield us to indulgence or sensuality. In Romans chapter 8, verse 8, and we're almost done. He said, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How many times our feelings have been hurt? And we allow this to manipulate our relationship with our God. Yeah. People don't hurt your feelings. Grow up. Yeah. I'm talking to myself, too. <laughs> but really, you're not in high school. You ain't in seventh grade no more. Grow up. Really. People are going to talk about you. Not everybody's going to like you. They don't like Jesus. They went about doing good. Doing all that were oppressed of the devil. The Bible said God was with them. They're especially not going to like you because God is with you. If you're doing that which is different and you're different, they don't want you to do the same thing so they don't talk about you because they're not comfortable in their own skin. Yes. They have insecurity issues that they need to work on. That's why people talk about people in the first place. Because they're not happy. And I've been there, but God saves. God saves. Because we're not happy, we feel threatened, and so we talk about somebody to make ourselves look better. Mm -hmm. But really, we're this small. Yeah. We can't Allow our hearts to guide us. Jeremiah said, your heart can deceive you. Mm -hmm. We have to allow the spirit to guide us if we want to live the winner's life, the Christian life. Let's keep going. First John chapter 2, verse 15, he said this, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. This is still operating in the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, lust of the uh, flesh. He said this, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the God abideth forever. The, the body may become self-serving or God-pleasing. To will to do the right thing is present with me, but I find myself falling short. The flesh is not saved upon salvation. What time I got, Sister Evans? 7.29. Oh, praise God. Not 10 minutes. The flesh is not saved upon salvation. Yeah. We talked about that, but we're reviewing. The flesh is not saved upon salvation. The inclination to sin is still there. Yes, that's right. But as a Christian now, we've confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and our soul and spirit are saved now. We want to break it down. Soul and spirit. The soul. Self-consciousness. The soul is intellect, the mind, the thoughts, the reason. 
That's your soul, the real you. That's the real me. The, the soul is the real me. The spirit is the God conscious. It's where God wants to dwell at. The soul, it may yield to unbelief or confusion. Sometimes we're confused about things. And it happens normally when we get out of the word of God. We walk away from church. God can't really deal with us. When there's things involved in our lives that may be contrary, but we try to twist the will of God to make it fit our life and the decisions we want to make. And God is really dealing with our heart and telling us not to do this. And that still small voice may be speaking to us, but we try to override it, amen? And so God, he's a perfect gentleman. He can't barge his way in. He loves us, and he's going to do everything in his power to ensure that we're saved and so forth. But at the same time, we have to give God something to work with. That's namely our hearts. Amen? Our hearts. But so the soul is the emotions, feelings, temperament, concerns. The soul may be yield to bitterness, loss, anger. It's the will, the choices, actions. It can yield to obedience or disobedience. We have to allow God to abide in our soul, to direct us, our soul and our spirit. And this isn't uh, crazy, wacky, jack stuff. It's psychology. Even in the secular uh, realm, they talk about this as well, about how the human structure, amen, is made up of three parts, the body, the soul, and the spirit. The body is the outward shell, your senses, your five senses, what you feel, and so forth. The soul, though, is the mind, is the thoughts. It's your thoughts, it's your reason, it's your will. But the spirit, the spirit, let's talk about the spirit of man. We're talking about the structure of a person. The spirit man can have faith or unbelief. Mm -hmm. It's where your God conscience is at. Some people don't even have a God conscience. Mm -hmm. They've given themselves over to so much wickedness. Yeah. God is no more found. They're void of understanding. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. That's what he's talking about there. That God conscious isn't there. Yeah. Some people, I mean, and that everybody's different. Some people, they may be in sin, but they still have a God conscious, a respect for God to whatever degree. Yeah. They're not saved a lick, or they're saved as a rock and roll, but they still have a God conscious. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't talk, but they, 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 they're respectful in one sense and so forth. But what I'm saying is, the spirit man, it's where faith wants to abide assurance, stability. Mm -hmm. Faith happens, though, or it occurs by being fed the word of God. Amen. If we're not fed the word of God, we're not going to have, guess what? Faith. Paul said faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. And so if we want our faith to increase and not operate in the flesh, guess what we should be doing? Reading the word of God. If we got a problem believing God on something, all we got to do is say, God, I don't understand. Help me in my unbelief. Right. God loves us. He's a loving Father. He doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to hope. But the flesh, it dies, and it cares nothing for right or wrong. The flesh doesn't have a mind. It just wants what it wants. Really, the flesh is dumb in that sense. It has no mind. It just wants what it wants. It has no knowledge of right and wrong. It's blind to morality. If it, happen, if it happens to be something good that it wants, like food and sleep, it wants that. But if it happens to be something evil, well, then it wants that. But that's where the Christian has to let God stay in the driver's seat. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to let God stay. That's why Paul said, what? Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we walk in the spirit of God, we don't have to worry about sinning. We don't. We don't. We don't. Let's check this out. First, uh, First Thessalonians 5, verse 23. And a very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about the same thing we just talked, touched on. He's talking about the, the human trinity, the body, soul, and spirit. Got three of them. Body, soul, and spirit. Right. He's saying, 
that I'm praying that your body, soul, and spirit be presented to, to God blameless. Blameless. God can present us blameless. The Christian can live above the world. He said this. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. In other words, folks, if God saved us, God intends to keep us safe. Yes, right. The angel told Mary, you should have a son. You should name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Not in their sins. From their sins. God wants to save us from it. He really does. The Christian must commit all things to God. We're, we're going to wrap it up right here. In order to win, we have to give it all to Jesus. When we don't, we fail. That's simple right there. <laughs> if we want to win, we got to give it all to Jesus. We have to give our body, our senses, what we feel, mistreatment, so forth, unbelief, etc., our mind, our thoughts, our reason. We have to give all three parts to God. If we give it all to God, we'll win. Check this out. Verse Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereto were ye, were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. Now, if we're going to follow his steps, what are we going to do? We're going to suffer, because Christ suffered, didn't he? He said, you should follow Christ's example. He suffered. Now, Christ suffered in the flesh as a man. Christ suffered in the flesh as a man. Yes, he was God, but he was a man also. And he wasn't acting as God on the earth. Christ suffered in the flesh as a man, and he committed no sin. The inclination to sin was there. Why? Because he was a man as well as God. God can't be tempted to sin. That's why Christ had to take on a human body. You got to always remember that. Christ had to identify with you. Somebody that says, I understand what you're going through, Sister Peterson, and they never been through what you've been through. How can they understand? The Bible says Christ was tempted at all points, yet without sin. So Christ was tempted to sin. Doesn't mean he sinned. He couldn't have sinned and took our sins. He had to be sinless. I can't take, I can't pay your debt off if I'm in debt. Christ can be in debt. Sin is debt. And so Christ was debt free, making it possible for him to ransom the souls of men and women, making it possible to buy us back because God's law condemned us, amen, but Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned the law and found the law guilty by fulfilling the law. Well, not found the law guilty, but, but, but let's say it this way, but fulfilling the law. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled what we couldn't fulfill. And so now, if the Christian is allowing Jesus to direct us and we're following this example, we can now fulfill the law. Loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. He said the same thing. You got to love God with all three parts. You see, some people got one part right. They love God on the outward. Oh, I love, I'm a Christian. A little like the devil. But they're not a Christian in their heart. They don't live like it outside of these four walls. And so... God was telling Israel way back when in Deuteronomy, it's a prayer called the Shema. They teach young Jewish kids this early. Oh, and that's one of the first things I think I want to teach Brandon that, Brody that. The Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. They teach the kids that early because that's one of, that's the greatest commandment. Yeah. It's the great, if you can love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul, you can win. Yeah. The second is like unto this. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And we love God with everything that's with us, we're going to win. Amen. Love him the way he wants to be loved, yeah. unconditionally. Yeah. Well, God, I'm going through all this. You'll see what's going on. Keep loving God. Look at Jesus. Yeah. You should be weary and faint in your mind. Yeah. And that's really the great secret of the hour. Yeah. God knows what it's like to lose a son. He lost his son. Right. And all thanks be unto God on that third day. And he rose again in all power in heaven and earth. And he really wants us to be empowered Christians, not weaklings. We're above the world. We're above it. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. We gotta, we gotta keep this. Christ can cuss them back out when they cussed him out. That's what reviled means. He took it. 
he took it. And he committed himself to him that judges righteously. He trusted God. He trusted God's plan for his life. That's really what it is. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you are healed. Praise God. God bless you as I pray. Folks, let's remember that Jesus is our example. And anytime you feel like, man, God, I'm suffering. This is a little too much for me, God. This is more than I can bear. Consider Jesus. And what he went through, he shouldn't. Have, he didn't deserve that cross. No. He didn't deserve those that crown of thorns. He didn't deserve to get mocked, his beard plucked out, his bowels gushed out. He didn't deserve that. He was innocent, but he took it for us to show us that we can make it. God bless you as our prayer. Remember to walk in the Spirit. Don't you feel the lust of the flesh? God bless you. Amen. Praise God.